WWF Kenya is part of the largest environmental conservation organization on the planet, the Worldwide Fund for Nature, and has worked in our nation for 50 years, striving to improve the lives of the communities and animals that call Kenya home. WWF seeks to build capacity for local communities and secure a healthy natural environment while empowering them to protect and benefit from it. Our community-based approach ensures sustainable management of the ecosystem so that the communities, their businesses and the environment can all thrive. By managing resources and ecosystems to support communities, WWF ensures that people live in harmony with nature. Our work began in 1962 with the securing of what is now known as Lake Nakuru National Park. WWF has been present implementing projects in Kenya for the last 50 years. The first project that WF implemented was to secure the land that is now called Lake Nakuru National Park, which was bought with money that WF provided and transferred to government to provide habitat for endangered species that include black rhinos. Initially, in the 1960s, the government of Kenya used to own just a part of the lake. Then uh, in 1974, uh, WWF came in to assist the government of Kenya to purchase uh, almost three quarters of the land from the farmers and ranchers living around the lake to increase the size of the park. And uh, then the park increased from about 60 uh, square kilometers to 188 square kilometers. So WWF have done a great uh, work in conservation of the biodiversity by making sure that uh, this park is conserved well. When you see the lake and you see the rich biodiversity that this park has, you'd really want to work in such a place. Thanks to the conservation efforts, Lake Nakuru National Park has preserved its great biodiversity and become one of the most visited parks by both local and international tourists. For 50 years, WWF Kenya and its partners, including the Kenya Wildlife Service, have focused on wildlife conservation efforts with three global flagship species at the center of our work. African elephants, marine turtles, and the black rhino. Kenya Wildlife Service and WWF has partnered since the inception of KWS in 1990. We've grown this partnership particularly in the area of species management, in the elephant and the rhino programs. Together, WWF and KWS are spearheading the use of technology in rhino and elephant management. By tagging these species with GPS-enabled microchips, they are able to track movements in real time. This improves conservation efforts and assists in minimizing human-wildlife conflict. But this work is only the beginning. WWF is supporting Kenya Wildlife Service to establish a forensic lab. The information from the forensic lab helps us to build a baseline information on the species that we have. It also helps us in collecting evidence that can be used to prosecute criminals in court of law. Together, these conservation efforts are making a huge difference. When the partnership began, there were less than 300 rhinos. Today, there are over 1,000 and the elephant population has grown at the same time from 16,000 to 30,000. While WWF Kenya's initial focus was on wildlife conservation, we have since expanded to include the management of scarce water resources, conservation of disappearing forests, climate and energy work, governance programs and the management of marine resources. Along Kenya's coast, we address sustainable natural resource management and biodiversity conservation with a focus on empowering and economically improving the communities who live there.
WWF Kenya started its work in coastal Kenya uh, 20 years ago, starting with the sea turtle conservation work around the Kyunga Marine National Reserve project. Later on, this uh, expanded to include a population health and environment program. And uh, later still, uh, the work expanded to include forestry and education for sustainable development. Another intervention that we've had is the sustainable fisheries management, where we encourage fishermen to adopt sustainable fishing methods that enhance the fisheries resources in the area. We have worked towards improving access to credit and savings facilities for the local communities. We helped establish the Rassini Fisheries Cooperative in Faza, and now it is working very well. Fishermen are able to get loans to be able to buy gear and the fishing crafts. We formed a Rassini Fishermen Cooperative in 2006. As an individual, you cannot solve the problem, but together we can solve the problems. Mimi liko maskini, nika pachiwa, msado wa pesa na WWF, nika unda chombo, kisha lafu, tuka shirikiana, tukawa unda chama, WWF kwa chisaidia, in addition to working with cooperatives, we have a whole community approach and as such support the construction of local schools and dispensaries in various coastal communities. Coastal Kenya is home to four of the world's six turtle species and since its inception, WWF has worked to protect this threatened animal. We have found ways of making turtle conservation beneficial to communities uh, for example, we have the flip-flop business where the youth and women work together to clean the beaches and uh, collect the flip-flop that are used to make crafts and uh, sellable items. Uh, basically, we are turning trash into cash. Zamani, beach yetu ilikuwa ni chafu, ilikuwa kukifanyika poaching. So, bada hapo, kakuja WWF, ikakachini na sisi. Ika tufunza namna kufanya beach patrol ili tupunguze poaching so baada ya hapo ikatufunza kufanya beach clean e, na upande wa kufanya beach clean ili tutoe flip flop hapa tupeleke kwayo uh, shida ilikuwa ni chaka chaka kwa beach ni nyingi na kasa pati kuzaa na kuteremsha watoto shirika la WWF likaja likachilimisha Coastal Kenya is undergoing a lot of change in terms of development and this will affect the environment and the livelihoods of the local communities. The work that we do goes to ensure that uh, communities uh, can, able, can be able to mitigate the adverse effects of this, this development. Over 800 years ago, the Mijikanda people, fleeing war and oppression in the north, found refuge and protection in the forests of coastal Kenya. There, they built their homes, raised their families, and found a place to practice their sacred traditions. WWF started working in Kaya Forest since 1986, when it supported the first forest survey which informed international conservation organizations on the values of this forest. Since then, 43 kayas are gazetted as national monuments and nine sites are world heritage sites. The kayas demonstrate very clearly that traditional beliefs, values, practices, regulations can be highly effective in protecting areas of high natural heritage and of high biodiversity. Protecting the culture and gaining this protective status was only the beginning of WWF's efforts. They also worked to improve the financial situation of the community by bringing in village banking and ecotourism projects. Sisi wazewa makaya mijikenda. Tumefanya kazi na National Museum, WWF, Hao ndio wametufanyisha kuwa na nguvu ya kulinda mila, tamaduni zetu pamoja na misitu yetu ya kaya.
the Awer people are originally hunters and cutters living deep inside the Ponidodori forest. These people were unknown to the rest of the Kenyans and had no access to government services. WWF came in to Boni Dodori because it's part of the global priority area and part of the coastal East Africa forest. WWF has had a number of initiatives, uh, among them advocacy work, trying to uh, amplify the voice of the community and improve their participation in uh, national and county development plans. Through the effective advocacy program, capacity has been built among the aware people and the community empowered to speak for their rights and in turn has gained support from the government. WWF did not stop there, also working directly with the community to improve their agriculture. <laughs> karibu nusu kwa nusu ilikuwa inaenda na wanyama wapori lakini wakaleta technology nyingine mashamba ikilimwa unaweza weka ua kwa mtaro katika pembe zote nne wanyama hawezi kuingia na ambapo sasa ndio imefaidisha sisi kwa kiwango kikubwa sana wale walikuwa wanapata kama gunia tano sasa hivi wanapata gunia 30 40 kuendelea mbele WWF Kenya seeks for people to live in harmony with nature not just now, but for many generations to come, and thus works implementing environmental programs at schools across the country. Education for Sustainable Development is a project that we started in the year 2014. So essentially we want to inculcate in the pupils the culture, knowledge, skills and abilities to sustainably manage their resources. Over and above curriculum creation and implementation, WWF works directly with schools and the community to improve access to education and strengthen academic services. In addition to paying fees for some of the students, the project has also worked with the schools on training and mentoring students on importance of uh, education, training teachers and providing infrastructure in the schools in form of uh, fences and water tanks. For us, education is a human rights issue. We work to empower the children of Lamu. Without education, some of the children could fall into the trap of child marriage, drug abuse, and a life of few opportunities. By providing education, together we are enabling a bright future for the children of Lamu. We use the whole school approach, where we involve the pupils in all the activities. So they're the ones who are involved in the tree planting, um, the kitchen garden, the landscaping of the school. They're the ones who actually do uh, these activities together with their teachers and they, um, after doing these activities they are able to acquire skills and abilities and knowledge for doing these activities and then they do the same things at their home. What we are doing is very important because we realize that how we are using our resources right now we are already borrowing from the future generations. So we want to use the resources that we have sustainably so that the future generations can also be able to enjoy the same resources that we are enjoying right now. Our future plans is to really reach to very many schools who can also reach now to very many uh, villages so that you can have a critical mass of the population who are using their resources sustainably. This program seeks to address WWF's principle of combining field-based projects, policy work, capacity building and education to create concrete conservation solutions. This program has successfully enhanced capacity of civil societies, improved financial flows that impact natural resources, developed strategic partnerships with government bodies, shaped policy and improved natural resource management as well as spearheaded clean energy initiatives. WWF in Kenya has been working with civil society organizations at various levels. WWF has been working with community forest organizations, water resource users associations, community groups, and also with the national civil society organizations to be able to influence various legislation, which in turn affects the way the extractive sector are going to be managed to reduce the impacts on the environment. 
WWF is working with all communities, county government, and national government agencies to ensure that large-scale investments that are emerging in coastal Kenya in mining, in large-scale inf infrastructure, in large-scale agriculture, and oil and gas follow international best standards and practices to safeguard environment and social well-being of the people. WWF works on the ground with community members to ensure their immediate environment is both protected and working for them. And they also work at a national level lobbying for environmental policies that benefit the whole country. WWF has worked with the Commission for the Implementation of the Constitution and civil society to ensure that the formulation of the legislation under the new constitution receives public input. WWF has been of tremendous assistance to the Commission in two fundamental ways. The first part that WWF has been able to support us is the technical expertise and advice that we have received from WWF on matters pertaining to natural resources as a whole. But the other part that the WWF has been of assistance to us is in fulfilling a constitutional mandate in the development of legislation in this country. WWF also works to support economic empowerment by setting up village banking with their project cooperatives. Through these, members take loans that allow them to open shops, improve their gardens, buy a boat or start a small business. Kinondo Village Bank ilianzishwa mwaka 2003 na uhifadhi na, na shirika la WWF na azma yake ni kuhifadhi mazingira na kuleta maendeleo kwa jamii. Tulianza na 1500 na mpaka sasa tumepeana kiwango cha juu 550 WWF works to combat climate change through a variety of creative initiatives. One example is the use of solar predator deterrent lights to mitigate the dangers lions pose in and around the national parks. Across the country, solar lights and high-efficiency cooking stoves reduce the damaging environmental effects of conventional methods. WWF wametusaidia kutupatia solar ambazo watoto wetu wanasoma hata usiku bila wasiwasi na tukapatua majiko ambayo wanatumia kuni moja au mbili. Our work has gradually grown to cover fresh water and forests. The focus on this has been in the Mau, Mara, Serengeti and Naivasha landscapes. The African Rift Lakes program spans three countries and is one of the 35 global outstanding priority places identified by WWF. Here, we are piloting integrated water resource management programs, engaging with the private sector, strengthening civil society and developing a payment for environmental services program to secure this crucial watershed. The Mau Forest, which covers roughly 400,000 hectares, is a very important water tower for Kenya. It's the source of 12 rivers, one of them being the Mara River. So over the past four decades, the Mau Forest has really suffered. We've lost approximately 40% of the Mau. Before, there was encroachment. People could just go in and out and take what they want. And there was general destruction of the forest. Years of illegal logging and encroachment threatened the survival of the Mao. In 2008, Kenyans united in the fight to save the forest, and various NGOs took over responsibility for sections of the forest. WWF adopted three blocks and began a program of protection, education, and economic development. So WWF realized that unless we improve the livelihoods of the communities that are adjacent to the forest, then they will give on and grow. So what they did, they supported us with the enterprises, those things that we can do for, for, for our living outside the forest. These activities include animal keeping, micro enterprise and reforestation, which has led to a significant improvement in forest cover. 
So ever since 2008, when we started working with uh, the communities and the Kenya Forest Service and other partners, we've ne noticed a lot of positive change, and we're happy to note that there's a lot of uh, regeneration that's happening in the forest. Along the Maru River, which flows from the Mao Forest, WWF set up a Water Resources Users Association made up of downstream beneficiaries including game parks and industrial farms. This association assists upstream local farmers helping them improve their crops and livelihoods and thereby ensuring downstream farms and wildlife receive a continuous flow of life-supporting water. Water is important for people, park and the animals because that is what we use in our day-to-day -day life. And also when you look at the Mara River, it is the only river which passes through the Masai Mara Game Reserve. So the wildlife, uh, the, the wildlife with down the Mara depend on it and the communities living within the Mara also depend on it. There has been an improvement in, in water quality and quantity due to these efforts which we have put in. Since, that, since uh, there is less erosion due to farmers practicing good soil and water conservation in their farms, and also the improvement of the tree cover has uh, ensured that there is more infiltration on the ground, thus sustaining the, the flows of the river. Another example of the innovative solutions WWF has put in place to solve water issues is in the Naivasha region, where WWF has set up a payment for environmental services system where the flower industry offers farmers support and cash payments to ensure sustainable management of the land and upstream river that they both depend on for their livelihoods. Having conservation structures on their farm has resulted in improved yield as well as incomes. And the farmers also have a better understanding of the link between a healthy environment and improved livelihoods. One of the most successful programs we had was in the Lake Bogoria Basin, where we mediated a conflict between two communities and implemented a series of creative water programs that allowed the river not just to flow to all the farms and the lake, but even created excess to sell to neighboring towns, encouraging a thriving water cooperative. The region was in conflict. Upstream farmers were using up all of the water and downstream farmers, as well as the lake, were left with nothing. Without intervention, the communities would be at war. The farmers would not have water and the animals would be dying, destroying tourism and income for the region. After 14 years, working in this region, uh, I must say that we are quite proud as WWF as people are peaceful now, people are wealthier than we found them, there is plenty of water and people are living in harmony with nature. WWF Kenya's work will strive to respond to emerging issues in this growing economy in areas of large-scale infrastructure, rampant illegal wildlife trade, climate change, expanding agriculture and investment in extractives. We will continue to work with communities, resource users, government, the private sector and all other stakeholders to garner support for policy and advocacy work to create a more enabling environment. Our vision underlines the inextricable links between a healthy natural environment and human development in Kenya for sustainable natural resource management and biodiversity conservation.